This is MEME 520, Introduction to Robotics, offered in the School of Engineering and Applied Science at the University of Pennsylvania. The course is taught by professors in the GRASP laboratory and provides a mathematical and practical foundation for future explorations in the robotics field. This is the class with a few prerequisites that actually teaches you some of the skills that constitutes robotics. Robotics is still a very infant discipline. There's not a clear understanding of what skills is in robotics and what skills isn't. But when it comes down to it, when you start learning about how objects move in three dimensions, um, which is the first topic in the course, followed by how to move an arm to a position and how to solve those forward and inverse kinematic problems, these are clearly robotic skills that is going to help out as you have your career in robotics. I think it's a unique class in that way where it takes the most fundamental robotics concepts and the basic math you'll need to you know, understand lots of different courses and topics you'll touch on later and it builds up those skills and then very quickly takes you to apply them on you know, a real robot, on an industrial robot arm uh, and get some of that hands-on experience uh, with sort of the, the least steps beforehand to get going. As these assignments build, we're giving you the skills you need to do that pick and place challenge at the very end. And so this project that we were just talking about serves as a very nice capstone where you get to use almost all of the topics that you covered in the course and did in previous assignments and put them together into one autonomous robotic system. Right? There's no human interacting with it. The robot's making all of its own decisions based off of the information that it has. I really had a great time learning about uh, Python and sort of getting more used to that language. And at the same time, I also learned to visualize um, the transforms of the robot. I learned to visualize that the space that we're working in using the transformation communities. And it was really beautiful to be able to take this map and apply it in this way. So I think like most of us have plans of either going for research or the industry. And I think this gave us a lot of hands-on experience which is uh, very necessary when it comes to working in the industry. And not just that, the whole uh, structure of the assignments mm -hmm. and the labs is also very focused Push on up. how we uh, take different kind of questions you can think about. Uh, and like and translate theory to like practical exactly. yeah. yeah. That is very really really helpful when it comes to like research and stuff. So. One of the other big challenges that they had to deal with is that we didn't have a working vision system. So we told them the starting location of the static blocks and the approximate starting location of the dynamic blocks, but they're constantly moving. Um, so the teams had to come up with blind strategies for picking up the dynamic blocks. Um, so even if the dynamic blocks weren't picked up, they could have been moved from where the team thought they were, causing them to just constantly open and close the gripper for the rest of the round. You know, and so one of our goals in, in designing the rules was try to make a game where there were several different objectives of ranging difficulty so that uh, teams could focus on some of the fundamental aspects like moving the static blocks and once they had perfected that, move on to some of the more challenging tasks like grasping the dynamic blocks and reorienting the blocks and starting to think about how all these different pieces in their uh, solution merge into one strategy they thought would be effective. We learn a lot of working in a team and yeah. the end goal is, is, is fun at the end so in, in addition to applying what you're learning you're just having fun learning new stuff, discovering new techniques or new strategies if you want to say that. Similarly the different blocks are worth different amounts of points. The static blocks, because they're not moving, are worth less points, while the dynamic blocks are worth more points. Um, and because the dynamic blocks are shared between the two teams, there's a little bit of competition where maybe one of the teams grabs all the dynamic blocks early on, and the other team is limited only to scoring the static blocks. In the earlier rounds, this wasn't a big deal, but by the time you got to the finals, it really came down to doing all the static blocks perfectly, and then getting as many dynamic blocks as you could. Sometimes luck does go in your favor though. Oh. Oh.
Will it knock it off? disappointed considering we were like the highest scoring team all throughout the competition and the fact that the reason we were not able to perform in the semi-finals was actually luck because when we dropped one block it kind of caused like an effect a rippling effect that may, uh, like kept dropping blocks after blocks so we, we are a little bit disheartened but then at the end like we've made the progress and we saw our stack go like six block high so like we are happy with that we are very happy with what we yeah. for both placing the object on the goal platform as well as reorienting the object so that a special side is pointing upwards and they get more points the higher the object is in the world so the taller tower they build with their blocks uh, the more points they get. One of the challenges with that is that the dynamic blocks are worth more for their altitude as well, and so you would want to grab them at the end and put them on the very top of your tower. My favorite part was definitely today, demo day. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but it hasn't been easy. <laughs> but it's been really fun to actually see the robot and like know that we did that. <laughs> We were able to make it, like build a tower, almost got dynamic blocks. Yeah, so it was really it was fun. fun. Yeah. Students get to work with, uh, you know, our two industrial robot arms in the lab. But since it's an 80-person class and we have two arms, there's only so much time that students can work on the actual robot. And so one of the things we tried to do this semester was. Uh, set up a really strong simulation to real pipeline where students had a simulator they could run on their own computer that would, you know, as closely as we could manage, uh, match the real environment. Um, and so we tried to push this workflow that you know, we use a lot in our research as well of developing your basic algorithms in simulation, testing rigorously in simulation, and then coming into the lab and uh, seeing if you know, what you see in real life matches that. Um, and I think that's a really valuable workflow and we tried to structure the class around that a lot. And I think, I hope that uh, that was an effective strategy for students. Trying to translate everything that you've learned in simulation and bringing it to an actual competition and treating that as your like a final exam kind of a thing, that's just impressive because we would much rather have every final exam like this where we're actually working <laughs> on projects than just sitting in class writing exams. Yeah. I hope that students got the experience of uh, seeing how this larger concrete task this robot has to complete was able to be broken down into all the different conceptual topics they touched on uh, that semester, you know, kind of like the karate kid, wax on, wax off, and then, you know, in the end, they learn how to play karate, or how to, how to do karate. <laughs> um, and would you guys recommend this class for future students? Definitely. Yes, yes, definitely. 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 Definitely. I've actually already been recommending this class to everybody I know. Uh, any advice to uh, students who might be thinking about taking this class? Oh, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and have fun. And have fun. Yeah. Remain yeah. calm. We really didn't think we were advanced so far, but uh, <laughs> I think simple strategies. Yeah. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Keep it simple, and uh, you'll go far. Start the homework early. Oh, God. <laughs> Some of the projects, some of the assignments could be really hard. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you are with a lot of people who are coming from different backgrounds. So definitely working with people around you really helps. And look forward to the final project because that's the most exciting thing about the impact course. Thank you guys.